Hi, good evening to everyone. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me. Today I actually feel a little bit sick about this. COVID autoimmunity is what I've been speaking about since early 2020. And there is a recent paper that was published on the 19th of March, and I'll be coming back to it in a little bit. Uh, ACE2 enzymatic activity is associated with immunoglobulins in COVID-19 patients. I'll explain what that means in a little bit. But I, I felt sick because we could have found this easily three years ago. And it was because we knew this was going to happen. This, was, this is exactly what we were concerned about with regards to autoimmunity. And I feel worried because I know this is only the tip of the iceberg because what has been found in this is far worse than I had imagined. Now, I'll take you back in history because in July 2020, working with a couple of professors, one of them, Professor Cahill, some people may know her, brilliant scientist. You may not necessarily agree with everything she says, but she is absolutely brilliant at what she does. And so our aim was, and we were putting together this grant proposal at the time, and we were looking for autoimmunity. So this is from 2020, looking for autoimmunity to ACE2. And um, we anticipated the lung injury, possibly issues about pulmonary hypertension, and we were looking for autoantibodies. And we had a whole system in place to look at the peptide arrays, break the, um, the patients down, the, the serum down, or the, um, the ACE2 down into little pieces, and look for autoantibodies in it. And initially, we only were thinking a pilot of about uh, 12 patients, and if it showed autoantibodies, to then try and go on to a bigger um, um, study. Now, for anybody who's done research, if, if you and not within a big institution with a lot of funding, it's extremely difficult. And we couldn't just, we couldn't get the funding. And so this is what I feel about, because we knew this was going to happen. We anticipated it. And we knew this was extremely important because if the virus could trigger autoimmune responses, we knew that the trigger was the spike protein. And therefore, it meant that any other source of spike protein could trigger similar kinds of problems. And that's why I've always been very, very concerned. And I'm on edge still. And just so you remember the science, this is an example, a picture of the virus. And on the surface, these blue areas here represent the spike protein. The red areas are other like envelope or M proteins that um, the body can make antibodies to. But the critical one we wanted or focused on was the spike protein because we knew it bound to ACE2. And so our concern had always been around the risk of autoimmune responses, especially with regards to the presentation. So before I go any further in explaining it, I am now determined that I should never be in that position where critical research needs to be done and it can't be done because of lack of funding. For those who want to support us, please, there's the COVID-19 Foundation 360. It's a basic course. It's going to lead into an advanced course. We are covering a number of modules in this, but as I said, this is a foundation course. And I've realized that I have to capture this important information about autoimmunity because very few people seem to get it and they therefore don't understand the implications of what is going to occur. And I say what is going to occur because this has to be a problem. It's not going to disappear because autoimmunity and autoimmune diseases don't go away. Once they've been triggered at the moment, based on current medical treatments and therapies, all we do is control it. We don't cure them. And so I've always anticipated a massive rise in autoimmune diseases. So when we come back to this paper here, 
and um, it showed something that I, I, I didn't anticipate, but I think we would have found it based on the kind of research we were looking for. And in this um, paper, what they were looking for is, again, they anticipated the same thing. So this was published in March, 19th of March, 2024. So this is just about two weeks ago or so. And so they identified many me mechanisms of, um, responsible for COVID-19 pathogenesis are well established, but there are other bits that they are not sure about autonomic dysregulation, coagulopathies, and high levels of inflammation. And so they, again, ask the simple question, could this be autoimmunity? And, and listen, I, I no longer excuse anyone who says, well, we don't know. If you have not figured out what is going on with severe COVID-19, and you actually should know what you're doing, and you haven't considered autoimmunity, I don't know what to tell you. You shouldn't be in a position where you are trying to lead the scientific um, agenda because this is serious stuff. I don't. I can understand in 2020 missing this, but not in 2024. It's not acceptable. Absolutely not acceptable. If you don't know about it, go and do your research. Ridiculous. So as we come back to this here, this is around the fact that they were trying to work out if some patients may develop antibodies that have a negative molecular image of the receptor binding to blame sufficiently similar to ACE2 to yield ACE2 catalytic activity. These are what they call abzymes. Now this I didn't anticipate. Definitely anticipated the autoantibodies, and the evidence showed almost every severe patient had autoantibodies to ACE2. And for me, the, the it's very simple. This is what we predicted in 2020. We said that the free floating ACE2 would bind to the spike protein of the virus. And because there is a huge inflammatory response in the lung, some, not necessarily all, of the immune cells would pick up the virus, break it down, but they wouldn't be able to differentiate the spike protein from ACE2. And so quite logically, they would then make autoantibodies. Now, what seems to have happened is not just autoantibodies that would target ACE2, but also abzymes. These are autoantibodies that would also target the actual um, peptide that ACE2 acts on. So it's, instead of it just being an, an antibody that hitches onto something and triggers the immune system, it's an antibody that has enzymatic activity. Goodness gracious. I mean, the, the implications of that are, are absolutely horrific. And to put it into context, just so we understand that this is not a new thing, and so here we have similar things, catalytic antibodies in normal and systemic, uh, uh, systemic lupus erythematosus. This was published in 2017. This is actually a book. And they were highlighting in here so that they pointed out detection of catalytic abzymes were shown to be the earliest indicator of different autoimmune disease development. And some abzymes are cytotoxic and can play a dangerous negative role in the pathogenesis of autoimmune diseases. And so SLE is characterized by the appearance of abzymes with several different catalytic functions, including targeting DNA, RNA, and oligosaccharides. So this is not new. This occurs in autoimmune disease. I can't say I knew a lot about abzymes, but it makes perfect sense because the immune system would then be producing antibodies from multiple aspects of the um, different parts of the spike protein and ACE2, which would include the receptor binding domain. So in the paper, they were finding this really odd pattern. And so when I'll show you this here again, so you can see, I'm not going through the paper in full, but essentially what they were finding is that, as I said, the data suggests that some patients with COVID-19 develop antibodies 
with abzyme-like activity capable of cleaving synthetic ACE2 substrate. And what that means is ACE2, this enzyme that normally functions in the bloodstream, is breaking down angiotensin 2 to angiotensin 1-7. That's its normal function. And so that in itself could be, in theory, not necessarily a bad thing, except that ACE2 will have other functions and it will dysregulate the whole balance of the renin-angiotensin system. And it could explain why we see very strange patterns where people, after they've had COVID, then suddenly have poorly controlled blood pressure or, they're, or not having hypertension, suddenly get hypertension because there is clearly some kind of dysregulation of the immune system. Now, the bit that is really, really concerning for me, and this is now because this opens up a whole can of worms with regards to the implications of this. I'm gonna show you an image here as to initially, our research was focused on ACE2 because we knew this bound to the spike protein. This is the spike protein here, and it would bind to the receptor binding domain. So we knew that if this gets caught up in the immune response, the immune system will make antibodies against ACE2 as well as the spike protein. But guess what? There are also other proteins, furin, neuropylin 1, DC sign, even estrogen binds to the S2 portion, the estrogen receptor, I should say. This is absolutely horrific. And it would then start to make sense of some of these really unusual things we were seeing, where people were having menstrual irregularities, women were having menstrual irregularities, um, which occurred after vaccination. It just made no sense unless it was an autoimmune response. Can you imagine if abzymes are being formed in that way, targeting the estrogen receptor? This is a huge can of worms that we absolutely have to explore. The implications are frightening. And as I said, this is way worse than what I had thought. I had thought it was just autoantibodies. That's bad enough because it's triggering the immune system to target cells that have ACE2 on the surface. So that's bad. But when we are having immune or in, in antibodies, that are also acting like enzymes. Talk about complicating the picture. I, I don't know what to tell you. All I can say is that we're at a point now where I think the public has to demand that science is done. Because clearly, I mean, there is no excuse for not fully understanding autoimmunity. Nobody can say they didn't know because we published the paper. Many other people publish these questions around autoimmunity. How can it be that this is not known properly? Now, we also know, and I know they, um, what happened in Italy, when they were looking at autoimmunity being triggered even by vaccination, very clear numbers. We're talking about like 20% in a small study. It's not acceptable that this is not fully understood. I, I, I as I said, the scientific and medical community is going to dis completely destroy their reputation by literally, I, I'm afraid to say the N word um, in terms of, I can't even say it. I don't want to say that word. I just want to say that maybe they have not, they have been complacent in terms of looking at the implications around the pandemic. They've been complacent about the complications that can occur. But once they are aware, if they don't do anything, that then becomes the N-word, which is negligent. And from a clinical point of view, that's a word nobody wants to hear. You know, you can, you can acknowledge mistakes, but negligence goes into a completely different category. And so this is where we are. And I have, I have to think now that the scientific and the medical community 
if you don't do this research, and it wasn't that expensive for us to do at the time, we just couldn't get the funding. There is no excuse when billions of dollars are being spread around, when companies who benefited from the pandemic are earning huge fortunes and not to have done that kind of research is completely unacceptable. So let's see if we can find a better way forward. But clearly what it means is that funding needs to be more easily available for independence, for people who are just searching for answers, whether or not they're inconvenient. But we really need to make critical changes. Because as I said, I saw Gert say this today, there is a tsunami coming. There may not be a lot we can do to stop the water rushing back in, but potentially if we can mitigate this by understanding what we're facing, we can reduce the impact of what is going to be a very difficult five to 10 years when autoimmune disease explodes. So there's no easy way to say this, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And the public has got to force this work to be done and done properly and thoroughly. Have a great Easter. Sometimes good news is hard news. Let's hope that this is what this is today. Thank you.